Tata, are you sure about this building? I think so. You think so? You know so. The difference can mean all of our lives. This is what my contact told me. Fuck, Tata, this is not how you fucking make amends. They told me it's this building. Okay, well, as we say, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are across the globe. Welcome to On the Sofa with yours truly, Esther Austin. Well, today with me, I should say On the Sofa with Esther of South Africa. So with me today, I have an incredible, prolific gentleman by the name of Cisanda Henna. Um, he's obviously from South Africa, but he's a prolific um, actor, he's a producer, he's a filmmaker, he's a director, he's many things, but also he has his own personal development, or personal leadership um, organization. So we're just going to catch up with Sisanda. Have I pronounced your name correctly? That's right. Yes. C. Sander. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. We're going to catch up with this gentleman to find out what he's about. Now, before I go any further, C. Sander, I'd like to mm. ask my guests in a nutshell, in a peanut shell or a crab shell, who is C. Sander? <laughs> right now, Sander was a, was uh, a dad. My, my son, I've got two kids, uh, te- uh, 11 and 12. The one's about 10, 13. And, uh-huh. You know, they've got phones, but sometimes they get all, uh, they hit, you know they hit you up when they need something. They're like little kids, they'll keep at it. But yeah, I'm a father amongst other things, and um, an African mm-hmm. a filmmaker. Mm, yeah, and uh, Susanda, I think is um, is a hope is is hopeful is a visionary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's That's interesting. Today. Because you've used that word visionary. Now, I've done my research about you and just looked at some of the interviews that you've done. And, I mean, you are all these things, these labels, director, filmmaker, but there's something beyond that with you. Because I listen to the narrative that you use. I've listened to your language. And the language is being one about determination, focus. You do what you have to do. Those are the attributes that I feel that's got you to where you've got to. And even when you were talking about, you know, you were you were a runner at one point. You you yeah. went to the library and get books to, you know, because if you couldn't get in one way, then you were going to try another way. So there's this almost like this Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'll be back. You know, I will do whatever I need to do. Energy that you have, and that I feel is the basis for who you are. Would you say that, Susanda? Wow, Esther, thank you. That's, um, thank you for uh, seeing that, you know, in, in doing all of that work. And yeah, I, I have to agree. That's almost maybe 21 years in the industry now, and you're right. And maybe that's what has sort of kept me going. And uh, yeah. I think my colleagues would easily say, yes, yep, that's so true. Excellent, excellent. So what was, because, I, you know, in one of your interviews, you said you always wanted to be an actor and there was someone that inspired you when you were quite quite young. Um, can you share a bit about that story? But also I want to understand, were you inspired to go into this industry because you wanted to change your life around? I mean, did you come from um, a disenfranchised background and so there was a hunger for more or is it just something that you always knew you wanted to be? The acting, I have, uh, oof, that was so, it's been such a deep desire. Even when I think about it now, like that, that desire is sort of, is with me today. Um, there's a project that I'm currently auditioning for. And I actually sense recently that that passion mm-hmm. is back with me. Um, and uh, there's been something about, when I saw the other actors, there's been something about being able to move and inspire people. Mm-hmm. It's been with me, you know? That when I saw other, you know, other actors do it, when I was like, oh my god, I really want to do that. 
and you know you know when you get like just a gut instinct that like yeah. it's the passion but also the your gut kind of says yeah I, I have that in me i have the the ability to do that yeah um that's that's where that's where it's it it has stemmed from to to inspire entertain people take them transport them to another world and mm. yeah it just it just uh it it brought me alive and and you know the passion was um kind of when i was 14 15 in high school and i when i started doing some of those plays that uh the enjoyment of doing it like oh that experience i was like i i want to do more of this and more um I, to a degree like i feel like i kind of had a middle income upbringing okay um, and um you know my, i know my parents worked very hard to get us what what we had as children mm-hmm. and <clears throat> yeah i that you know that 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 was that's been a, my experience and i i think I, I didn't get the idea that being an actor would make you rich mm. it was more of like of an artistic expression you know yeah. then later kind of in my early 20s then i would i saw like some actors were able to make really good money mm-hmm. um but then quickly the reality i also saw that not everyone was making that kind of money you know um mm-hmm. and that's still a reality today right so absolutely yeah but i like that because you know when you talk about it it is interesting when you watch this back if you get the time to watch this back your face changes when you talk about um what you were doing your your face changed when you were talking about when you were 14 or 15 and you were you realized that this is where you wanted to go to so that passion and it's more than passion it's 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 um like you said you know when your soul knows that this is the path that i need to go on because there's a hunger there um yeah. that there's that hunger and also the hunger not just for yourself to fulfill this creative expression but the hunger to reach into other parts of person's life said you too can be part of this or you can have this experience if you choose mm. you know choose something that you enjoy don't just get hung up in you know going along plodding along life um and that's what i feel you know a part of your message is is about now so let's get down into the nitty gritty of you being the actor um so you know how fulfilling has it been to be in, to, to be an actor and also what are some of the because i know you were you um are you still on the series you were with a series how do i can have to pronounce it T S H A. Sorry, I'm rubbish with my brain. Yeah, ch- uh, um, cha cha. It's actually um, it's named after the Latin American ballroom dance. Just cha cha. Cha cha, cha cha. So yeah. are you are you still on that series? No. So that uh, that was one of the first ones I did. Mm. Um, we did three seasons of that, and I won an award. There's a, my award is in the other other space. I should actually bring it. I'll show you the trophy. It's still there, and I really appreciate it. Excellent. Um, um, yeah, maybe later I'll get up and run, and I'll I'll show you on the camera. Um, nice. So we made we made that uh, two thousand and two, two thousand and three, two thousand and four. We were shooting that. Um, yeah. We're in twenty twenty two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like twenty years ago. Yeah, we shot that. Yeah. Wow, wow. And so from your first acting experience to your experience now, what have what's been the change in you? So I'm asking a pretty deep question. I love them. <laughs> Esther, you like I promise you this interview is so good, I am surprised. You know, also I really appreciate it like not many people do this deep dive is what you've done. And this interview is an experience for me so i want to actually say thank you and i just want to acknowledge you uh i you know i think uh not everyone who does interviews does this kind of thorough work and it's like i feel really honored and so i want to actually really thank you um cuz you're taking uh, the time to talk to us but also the thing is i get this a lot a lot of people all everybody i interview say the same thing because for me it's you you guys are so valuable you know you're out there and you you're following your own dream and your own journey but can you imagine how many people that you can really inspire that's what it's about you're inspiring others because especially in this current climate that was my dog especially in this current climate people are struggling to find to understand their dreams or to even think i can i still have a dream i can still dream about hope so when i interview then i really want to get to the bones of 
who is this person? Not just as the actor, producer, but as the person. So, mm. yes. So continue with it. So, so continue, continue. So I have to be honest with you. Um, there's been a part of the journey that's been hard. Yeah, I was going to come to that, yeah. Uh, like very hard. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, I... I don't know if this is me being dramatic, but if I allow myself to be myself, it's like some of it really feels traumatic. Um, and I think, and, 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 you know, because of that, I think um, it's, it's sort of, it becomes part of your life journey. And it's, it's you know, because it's not just, oh, wait, look at me. I got talented. Now I'm great. And I, got, I win awards. No. No. Mm actually not that one-sided. Uh, um, <clears throat> there are beautiful things to celebrate. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's not all that it is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I answered a completely different question, so you'll have to give me a quick no, question. No you, no, you did. You did answer the question. Um, you, you answered part of the question because... You know, I was actually going to, because I said to you, I, the, the question was, who were you as an actor when you first started out to who mm. you are now? Um, and I guess what you shared in terms of the hardship has defined who you are now. And mm. you know, oftentimes people, you know, I interview a lot of um, musicians from the old school, like Motown, you know, I interview lots of great musicians and they always talk about um the Motown wheel, they had to be disciplined with their art, with their craft, with their rehearsals. They were, even in terms of how they dressed, they had someone that dressed them. So everything was tight. And yet sometimes, you know, when they got out on stage, they had so much going on in the background, but people didn't see that. And it's yeah. how, how did you, how do you manage both? How, how do you manage? Because you're out there to serve and to, to serve the audience, but then you've got to go back to your stuff. And that's, and I feel that's what also makes makes you people as a character, as an individual. That's that's the gold. That's the refinement. Yeah, it oof. it actually is because, like, I mean, twice I've been teary in the interview. It was the last thing uh, uh, um, I expected, but I allow it, and I I feel like uh, that that's that's life. So anyway. Is that if I cry, I cry. It's That's okay. I had this. I've had this so many times. I get this all the time. And I interviewed Shalomar a couple of weeks ago, and the lady Carolyn Griffey. She goes, "I'm crying." She goes, "This doesn't happen." I'm like, "Yeah, but you're just being authentic, and that's what it yeah. is. You're being you." Yeah. So, um, thank you. I, I'm just again. I'm appreciating your spirit now and your energy and your approach. And I think I'm feeling really inspired. I just feel like the gods of the universe is actually realigning me on my journey um, with this conversation with you. And because I'm being reminded about like almost what feels like the call, it's when you feel like something is bigger than you. Um, I've sometimes watched certain films and they're so good. Like, and, and because the character makes me feel seen, understood, mm. and known, mm. there's a way in which films, when you watch certain people on screen or certain characters, you see yourself, or where you didn't feel understood or, or seen as a, as a human, and, and, wow. and the way in which writers write and Wow. The actors and the directors bring that thing together mm. and on a journey with a certain character. That's also been one of my wishes. Uh, you know, I, I remember writing that in my journal that I want to be a vessel to be able to do that wow. because it, it just adds understanding to this human experience. Um, one of the films that's inspired me greatly and I remember like shedding a tear, not only because it was that the story, but just seeing what it was being able to do to me. I mean, I watched uh, The Glass Castle. It's a film starring um, 
Woody Harrelson, I think. Mm. And, um, it's, it's based on a memoir and uh, the author writes about her alcoholic dad. Mm. And you watch this film and I see from her point of view, basically how, how she viewed her dad, right? And, and um, but he was an alcoholic dad. And the thing is in some of, you know, some of these family dynamics, those could be like traumatic experiences, right? So where the, the parent is um, abuses, you know, a substance and it's dysfunctional family. But in the way that this film is being told, I felt like I remember hearing somebody speak about the film saying I'd never seen my dad in that light. My dad was an alcoholic, but when I watched the movie, mm. I heaped because I was able to understand things about my dad that I couldn't understand when he was alive. Wow. And when movies do that to people, ah, oh man, it's for me, it's one of those, like, it just feels like a gift, you know? Um, and that's, yeah, that's one of the things that, that you know, um, makes me feel alive. Mm. But also with films like that, they're not just, you know, oftentimes there's some really deep messages in those films. They are films with messages, mm. some like messengers. Um, and if you are woke enough to be able to understand what's being said then you can take away something for yourself or something that resonates with you and you said something key as well um you know when you watch these films you said it helps you feel like a human being that was really powerful now and I'm just going to ask you this and I may be wrong but was that comment also because you're a black South African man and some of the experience you've, you've had because of that yes Oh, I, I, there's multiple, um, that's my son coming back, my oldest son. Um, <clears throat> there's so multiple layers and answers uh, to this. Being, it being black on this planet mm. has, and you know, I kind of grew up partly privileged. You know, my parents were able to send me to, at the time, at, towards the end of apartheid, I'm in the interview side and it's a recorded interview. So give me a few minutes. Um, we can turn that light <coughs> off. Um, so, you know, uh, Blacks have had some trauma. I think even during COVID, right? So, I, th you know, uh, uh, we were able to watch all over the world kind of Black Lives Matter, right? And just see like the things that are happening to people of color. Um, that, that's in the US, but it's been happening for, you know, long periods of time all over the world, on the continent, in the, you know, all over. The diaspora has had, like, really, you know, hard experiences. Um, and so in my later years, I kind of woke up to the importance of this thing, mm -hmm. partly because in my own journey, I, I, because my father... You know, he had firsthand really uh, uh, extreme experiences of apartheid, right? So apartheid, yeah, and and you just, I don't, you you know, I, I turned forty this year, and um, there's so many things that I like. I would see certain wounds in my dad about about what happened in apartheid and and how that defined the man he was, and then the father he was, and who he was to us, mm. to my his wife, to to the children, and uh, even just some of what um, the grandkids experience as well. And like, yeah, there's, there's maybe ancestral, even uh, uh, wounds that we may not know about as Africans, uh, um, uh, even uh, people of African descent, you know, you, so yes, when you touch on being a, a black man mm -hmm. uh, and, and, uh, and, and South African, so what's unique about South Africa is we're, we're the last to have freedom on the continent, right? Mm. So, because I mean, other countries, you know, re, you know, gained their independence from being colonized in the 60s, yes. 50s, 80s. We're, we're the very last ones in 1994. Mm. So ours, the, our oppression and because their violence and the aggression got worse, towards the very uh, tail end of apartheid. And I think 
um, there's a part of our nation, including myself, that is yet still to heal properly. Okay. Um, and and the storytelling and films and TV series have a way in which to help people navigate things that have been maybe difficult to understand. It's through story, you know, because uh, it's somebody else's life and you sort of just witness something. But if you, you're right, some movies are able to take you even on a cathartic experience mm -hmm. that, that help you, you know, maybe move through something, etc. So I feel like, yeah, as, even as a black man, I think we, I, I have stuff that I feel like as a filmmaker, we, there's, there's still a way to go mm -hmm. and there's still certain important stories that, 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 uh, yeah, that, that need to be told. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And, you know, so where, there's another question I want to ask you, but so where are you now on your, on that journey? What, what are you working on now? So um, in, in the film company that I have, we work, you know, there's a, there's a couple of uh, projects that we're working on. Uh, one of, the, one of them is actually set in the Congo. Um, and it, you know, there's a thriller there. It's like a political action thriller. Uh, but what's interesting about the Kong and the subject matter, partly for for the film, is the you know some of the minerals that are in the Congo mm -hmm. and the the wars that happen around the minerals, right? Um, yeah. But you know that my wish around this that particular project for Africa is it. It's it's I call it a love letter to Africa because although what we've seen on one level is you know the the lack of leadership in, in terms of African states and governments and presidents who've either been corrupt over the years and um, and have not been able to take their countries forward uh, and yet Africa still has these rich minerals um, is that through this I feel like there is definitely uh, a new day. Uh, ahead for Africa, where to like, I say Africa becomes a superpower, right? Like, um, and and I feel like uh, through movies, I can I can show this vision. Mm, uh, excellent. I often, yeah, I often talk about like we've seen in American series and shows how we've seen America being portrayed as a superpower whether they've like got a great army or the great intelligence agencies or, you know, or whatever. It's, the, I think there's a big part of it that we first saw in the movies, mm -hmm. then almost as if, you know, uh, uh, life would then imitate the art actually almost the other way around because it inspired. So those, yeah, that's, those are some of the projects that we have, like, and some are, you know, pure genre pieces. And then as an actor, um, there are some interesting projects. Uh, one of them, uh, I'm actually still in our audition process for, um, okay. and um, I can't really say much about it, but I'm I'm really I'm really excited. Um, yeah, excellent, excellent, and also um, just touching on your personal development, the personal development side of your business. You do uh, is it a, do you have an academy? Is it an academy? Excuse me if I've got that wrong. So I, I was doing that, um, but we've, I've, I've recently sort of pulled back quite a bit on that, um, which is just, it's an interesting journey because I kind of went on this personal development journey. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then I, 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 it was like, wait, maybe I've got something else of value to offer to the world here. So, and then, so we started building these products and services that we can offer corporates, et cetera, mm -hmm. and on the personal development side, um which was really fulfilling work i must say as like i think i like it so now recently it's sort of um uh, played itself out where i'm sometimes part of doing master classes for up and coming actors and filmmakers etc where i'll go in and i speak to young people um yeah and some of them it's 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 you know uh, uh where people shed a tear or two in in the class and, and that's where I found, oh my gosh, like that's sort of some of the personal development work had, had gone into even some of the um, uh, skills development within the film industry that, I, you know, we've been busy with. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been really fulfilling. 
Brilliant. And so this has been really a really great interview. I've enjoyed this because, like I said, you know, yes, we know, you know, the director, but then it's the, the person behind because then it's the person behind that drives all these incredible things out front and mm -hmm. also the lives that you're touching. And, you know, if you could say anything to anyone out there at this moment in time, you know, being the, you know, you've traveled extensively, you've worked in the States, you've, you know, you've really fulfilled a lot of your dreams and you're still continuing on that journey. And thank you for being so open and honest and sharing how, you know, sharing that, you know, I still feel I've got some healing to do now for a man to say that it's quite, it's, a, it's, 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 it's an honor to hear that. And hopefully someone who's listening to this can be inspired to say, actually, like Michael Jackson said, maybe I need to look at the man in the mirror and it's okay. It's okay. I might not understand it, but at least mm. I'm addressing it. So what would you say to anyone who wants to step out into the field and fulfill their dream, but they're sitting on the sideline, women and arming? What piece of advice can Sisanda Henna give them? I would say to that person, um, hmm, give some time to listen to the voice within. And sometimes there's practical tools to do that. As a, uh, at some point, I remember coming across uh, one of the teachers who, who taught me how to write in a journal, right? Because the the when you give time to listen to that voice on the inside, you will give it an opportunity to, because if you first give it an audience, then it'll start showing you your own unique path, right? So, because, yeah, there's a unique path out there that I think it's predestined, you know? And, and um, if you pay attention to that voice, I, I believe, like, it will guide you. And today I'll tell you this, don't expect it to be easy. <laughs> Absolutely. But, but I think you, you, when you follow it, you will feel ease. Do you know if you understand, if you get like the difference, right? I, I get it. I, 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 I get it. I feel like doing, you know, Star Trek. Yep, yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I get it because I, you know, for me, I've been on a journey and it's been hard. It's been hard to get to this place, but I've kept on going. And people have said, I'm, I'm a bit like a Rottweiler or Arnold Schwarzenegger. There was something in me that kept on getting back up time and time and time again. Um, and some of the most incredible things have happened to me, but I've kept going. And now my ease is because I've created my dream. That's the ease because you're creating, you're walking in purpose. That's the ease. Yeah. But it's still challenging doing the walk but the ease is that you're on purpose in purpose following a dream and following your purpose that's the ease um mm. and what i'd also like to ask you then before i forget fame so you are going to be at fame week africa the 24th to the 26th of august what are we going to expect from you sisanda so uh fame has a, a few pillars in it which there's Musiki Africa. There's also the Cape Town International Animation Festival. And uh, there's MIP Africa. Um, and MIP Africa is the business to business trade show. It's a content market for Sub Saharan Africa. And so it's a meeting place to basically for buyers, which could be all, you know, the streamers and studios and broadcasters casters to find new content or to buy existing content, you know, for the different territories and countries as a space for producers to be able to showcase their new work and or, or find other producers to collaborate with in co-production. Um, so it's it's organized by RX uh, Global and RX Africa. They organize MIPCOM and MIP TV, and also they've got now MIP China and MIP Cancun. And so MIP has been a famous market in, um, in France which is often run alongside Can the Can Film Festival, yeah. So this 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 ought to be. I you know, I get excited when Africa comes together, and um, 
I'm, I'm excited that, you know, the industry throughout Sub-Saharan Africa will, will, is coming together uh, for this inaugural MIP. And I really want to urge anyone and everyone in the industry to check it out, come be part of it. Um, the, the organizers are looking forward to making connections with the different country film commissions so that um, we have as many uh, of the key people involved. I feel like Africa has huge potential when it begins to work together, when African countries begin to collaborate, you know, um, you find in Europe, like the, there's, I feel like the, even, okay, the Eurozone has enabled Europeans to, to, to kind of work together a lot more. And I look forward for, for Africa being able to do that. So, so that's, that's MIPCOM, uh, three days of uh, meetings and screenings. There'll be some premieres, cocktail shows, master classes, conferences. Uh, we're definitely having some interesting roundtables happening with some key people. Um, and you know, we're in a in a, such an exciting era, Esther. That um, you know, with with such of the big studios who are now streamers mm -hmm. um, making their way onto the continent. Um, I feel like this is an opportunity for the continent to sort of define what it wants out of itself through film and TV and the business of the next hundred years. Uh, we're like, we're at the beginning of a, um, I think of an era. And um, <laughs> I, I've said this before, I was like, it's it's be, before when, when different African states were exploited, or, yeah. you know, uh, you know uh, um, whether colonized in whatever manner, people extracted things. Yes, in entertainment, there's a lot of that now that we are we create the IP in music, fashion, film, entertainment um, that that Africa creates. But this, I feel, is an opportunity for us to define what we want that to do and to how that should benefit Africa and Africans. Um, yeah, uh, so I feel like kind of my big thing is we've got to create that sustainability sustainability sustainable growth you know um for for the african entertainer artists entertainment companies um uh, yeah mm, yes i believe that as well you it's almost like you're putting back in rather than taking out of yeah yeah absolutely brilliant that's a nice finale to this interview just want to say thank you so much for your time i've enjoyed this conversation looking forward to meeting you at the end of August, because I'm going to be there and, um, you know, wishing you all the best with all the other things that you are involved in and just hold on to the dream and just keep, as you say, just keep doing the healing, keep reflecting, keep praying off um, because you, you've started the journey already. Yeah. So bless you. Thank you for that. Bless you, Esther. I appreciate that. Thank you. Right. Thank you. And I think finally the world is starting to take notice. Uh, and Africa is about to make a point and, and prove itself. But I've made myself who I am in this city. This is one of the greatest initiatives to actually kickstart that, you know, to grow our South African industry. Actually, South Africa has got so much rich storytelling. It's important to allow those people to have that talent, meet the people who are looking for talent. Ladies and gentlemen, um, we're going to be starting in the next minute or so. We are about bringing together the film, television, arts, animation, media, music, and entertainment industries together, recreating the platform for them to write business, to meet, to engage, network, and um, to change, change the shape of the game. These are our stories, and we are ready to tell them. See you at Fame Week, MIP Africa, 24 to 26 August in the city of Cape Town.